Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about the Vert IO protocol. So if you remember the PCI, the peripheral component interconnect is the underlying system in which everything is built upon so that we can actually have a bus so we can talk to the devices that we have. So all the devices that we're going to have inside of this system are called Vert IO devices. That means virtualized IO devices. Since we're using an emulator, these devices don't actually exist in reality. And so there's several things that we don't have to do, like set up electrical characteristics, timings, and things like that. So instead, we're going to use this system, which is a ratified protocol, to be able to talk to the virtual IO devices that we have. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is take a look at the lecture notes that I have produced. Now these might've changed since I've made this video, but there you go. So if you are reading newer lecture notes, it's probably because I've updated them. But for now, let's take a look at the transport system that we're going to use here. So there are a few layers into this. So it's kind of helpful to understand what these layers are. So if you scroll down, we can see that there are these layers right here. Get the handy pen out. So the first layer is called the backend or the transport layer. What we're going to use is PCI, peripheral component interconnect, which was the previous lecture. We're going to use that as our transport layer. So that's the back end. Then on top of that, we're going to have the vert IO. So vert IO, virtual IO, that sort of stuff, it's all the same stuff. And then on top of that, we actually have the devices connected to it. So one of those devices will be the keyboard the GPU, the graphics unit. So we'll actually have graphical user interfaces, that sort of stuff. Now it's not gonna be anything fancy. We're just gonna draw it to the screen, that sort of stuff. And then finally, well, there's more, but there's a block device as well. So those are your hard drives. And then finally, we're going to have the mouse. Okay, so, and one more, just for the heck of it, we're gonna call it the RNG, the random number generator. The reason I, I, I added this one in there is because the random number generator is one of the easiest ones to control. And it's going to test this entire layer because if there's a problem in any one of these layers, it's not gonna function properly. So to test that your, your layers actually work, we're going to use the random number generator as the test. As you'll see with the keyboard, there's some setup that's required of it. With the GPU, there's some setup with it as well as the block device. But with the random number generator, we just say, give me a random number and it hands it to you. And if we get a random number, that means it worked. If we don't, that means it didn't work. So those that's how it's going to look when we do this. Now remember in PCI, we're given a vendor ID as well as a device ID. So we're going to match those to our vert IO devices down here. So let's clear the screen here. So a vendor ID, which is listed right here. Let's draw on the screen here. So I've highlighted that's one AF4, one Alpha Foxtrot 4. That is the vendor identifier for a Vert IO system. So remember on the PCI devices, we had a vendor ID, which was 16 bits. And then we had a device ID, which was also 16 bits. And what we did is when we built our driver, we would match the device ID as well as the vendor ID. So that's essentially what we're trying to do because when we left that, we didn't actually have anything to match with it because we didn't have any devices. So this is what it's going to look like. So all the vendor IDs for this Vert.io system are gonna be one AF4, one Alpha Foxtrot 4. So whenever we see that, so that's hexadecimal, when we see that, we know we have a Vert IO device. We can hand that off to our Vert IO subsystem. And then in our subsystem, what we're going to do is we're gonna look at the device ID, and that's gonna tell us what we have. So 1040 means an invalid device. It means it is a Vert IO device, but it's not currently functioning properly or something like that. So we have to be able to detect that, and but it's just, zero from this. If you'll notice, what we actually do is this vert IO is in the specification. It basically tells you this number means it's this type of device. For example, a block device right here will have the number two. And all you do is you take this base address 1040 and you add that number to it. So for example, if I have a block device, I take 1040 and add two to it and it gives me 1042. Block 16 or device ID 16, which is a GPU device, the graphics processing unit. If we add that to 1040, so 16 in hexadecimal 0x10. So that will give me 1050. So as you can see, all of these actually are just this number added with 1040. Uh, I like drawing on the screen, so now I'm getting kind of over. There we go. So the things that we're going to look at is number one, the block device card right here. We're going to look at an entropy device. That's the random number generator. And we're going to look at the GPU as well as inputs. So the input device actually serves two roles here. It's both the keyboard, so we're gonna get one for the keyboard and one for the mouse. 
Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll buffer that those for user space to actually claim and say, okay, let's look at this. That's a little bit later. We'll talk about ring buffers where we actually can store these events inside of a buffer and we have a certain choice to make. Do we overwrite the old events or do we drop all the new events? So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But for now, you see we have this PCI transport and this is how we're going to sort of funnel it down into the driver that I wanna use. So if we scroll down a little bit, we can see that the vert IO PCI capability. So if you think back to PCI, we had what's called a capes pointer. And that stood for capability pointer. And there are several different capabilities. And the ones that we're looking for is called the vendor specific. So remember the capability, every single one of them started with an ID, as well as a next pointer. So the ID that we're looking for is 0x09. So the ID is an eight bit number. And if it's 0x09, which is just 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. So if it's that number, it tells us that this is a vendor specific. So what we do first is we match the device ID and the vendor ID, and that tells us that it's going to be a vert IO system. So now whenever we look at the capability and we see 0x09, because we've already funneled it down as a vert IO system, we know that this is going to be vert IO PCI capability. Okay, so the vert IO PCI capability, if we actually look at these two fields, Whenever we look at the capabilities, we have the ID and we have the next pointer. So as you can see, we actually have that here inside of these two structures right here. So it's already captured inside of the C structure, so we don't have to do anything from there. But if you look at it, we actually add other fields, which are these fields down here. And those are the ones that we actually care about. Okay, so the ones that we're going to look at are the config type. So that's what all these defines down here are for. So these config types right here are the ones that we're looking for. And that's gonna be this field right here. If you can see my red pen on a black background. So it's line five there, it says identifies the structure. So that's what we're looking for. And the ones that we can have is one through five. Even though it's an eight bit number, the only values that we can have for this are one through five based on the vert IO specification. And so the ones that we're looking for are the common config. So if we get the value one, it means it's a common configuration. And there's certain fields that we will look at whenever it is a common configuration. You will get a lot of these. So for example, notification, that's actually how we notify the device that we read from it. Now the random number generation, random number generator does not have a notification system. We're just going to ask and the only notify that we're going to do is just say, hey, give us a random number. So you're going to fill in all the fields, supply it with buffers, and then just get a random number. And so that's what the notification is there. Now, if you think back into PCI, we talked about bars a little bit and what they are, but that's actually how we're going to communicate with these devices. And so as you can see, the next field that we have here is called the bar. So remember, we have bars zero through six. So that's eight, uh, seven total bars. And remember, we're going to combine those two if it's a 64-bit bar, which most of these are. So bar stands for base address register. And remember we popped in a number and that number had, it started with 4,000 and had some sort of value after it. Now, if you remember the PCI devices were 0x3 and then the vert IO system actually gave us this memory address free. So remember DRAM starts at 0x8, okay? So everything there up is going to be DRAM. So everything below that we have plenty of space to map out our devices on there. So with the RISC-V system, we don't have a, a dedicated IO bus. Now Intel machines, AMD processors, they actually have an IO bus, but we don't for RISC-V, so everything is memory mapped IO. Means all these are attached to the memory controller and it will either direct you to DRAM or it will direct you to the device that we wanna to talk to. So that's what that bar is. Remember, we're gonna put an address in there and then whenever we dereference that address, it will actually be the device that we're talking to. But after that, we're going to pad it out and we're going to get an offset and a length. Now, the reason we get an offset and a length is the bar contains the base memory address. And you'll see that most of these use one or two bars, even though we have about three to work with if they're all 64-bit bars. But basically, we're only going to have one bar. And what they do is they say, okay, let's assume for this sake of argument, that 0x4000000 is the bar that we set. So what's going to happen is this 32-bit offset is going to say, okay, if you wanna to talk to this common config, we're going to look at this config type field. And if it's the value one, we're going to take this bar address and add to it the offset. And that will be the start of the field. And you'll notice that most of these actually use the same bar, they just have different offsets. And in the vert.io system, they're usually offset 
by 1000 hexadecimal. Okay, and so they usually offset by that amount. They don't have to be. That's why we're going to look at this field right here to look at what the offset is going to be. And whenever we dereference this location, either set or load or store or load from it, that's how we're going to communicate with the actual device underlying device in there. So we're actually talking to registers whenever we look at something like that. So I've listed out, so I've written the operating system and I listed out the capabilities. And this is just a demonstration to show you all the different capabilities we're going to have. So remember the ones we're looking at are 0x09. That's the capability ID. It's an 8-bit ID. And if it's 0x09, it tells us that it's vendor specific. We know the vendor by looking at the vendor ID, 1A Foxtrot 4. Whenever we see that, we know that it is a vert IO device. And so we can actually apply that structure. Now, once again, we're not actually going to make a structure in memory or something like that. All we're going to do is map that structure using MMIO onto this capability pointer. And that's something you should have done on your undergraduate, but you can take a look at my code to see how I've done it. We're just going to typecast a memory address and say, okay, I want you to dereference this memory address so that we can talk to the device. So going down from there, we can see all these different things in there. Now, the ones that I'd like to draw your attention to is look at all these capabilities with four as the bar. So all of these use the exact same, well, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. So all of these are going to use the exact same base address register. But as you can see, the offset is different. So in this case, we see the config type is two. If we scroll up, we see two means the notification configuration. So the notifier right here is going to be bar four, whatever that is, plus an offset of 3000 in hex, okay? Then when we look down here, we see config type four, which is the PCI um, device-specific configuration, and it's going to be offset by 0x2000. So as you can see, they're 1,000 apart. And then scrolling down even farther, we can see the config type is 3, which in this case is the interrupt stat, uh, service routine notifier. And in that case, it's only 1,000 from there. And then the very first config type, 1, is the common config and its offset is zero. So as you can see for this particular device, and I don't know which one it is in this case, when I made it, I took a screenshot of it, but whatever it happens to be. So as you can see, we all use the exact same bar. Let's just say for the sake of argument, the address that we put in that bar is 0x4000. Now, if we were to dereference this, based on this last capability down here, you'll see that we'll have the config type one, which is the common configuration. If we dereference the memory address 0x4000, 1000, which is this capability right here, the config type is going to be three. So that's where that starts there. 0x4000, 2000 is where this capability is right here. So as you can see, that's where the configuration type four is. And all these configuration types are listed right here. So these are the config types right there that we're talking about. So the common configuration, type one configuration, so type one down here is what's called the common configuration. It have, has its own structure. Now, if we went to that memory address and that offset, so one down here is the offset zero. So if we were to dereference that, we would get this big long structure. Now this is on a device register. This is not in memory. It's on a device register. So we have to use this carefully because whenever we dereference one of these fields, it's gonna be memory mapped IO. So I will get, I, I will do another video where I actually show you how to configure these and what all these fields mean. But for now, I'm just giving you a general overview of what vert IO is going to look like. So we know that we have a type one configuration by looking at that capability. And the capability that we're looking for is number one, which is this right here. So that's the configuration type. If I was to dereference whatever is in bar four, let's for the sake of argument, say bar four has four zero 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 and then i add this offset to it which is just zero i'm going to get this structure right here so once again the important part is to notice that this is not in dram it's not in ram it's on the actual device itself so whenever we dereference this the memory controller sees it that it is connected to a bar a base address register on the pci bus and instead of actually going out to ram to find this information it's going to look at it through the vert io device same thing goes with configuration two. Now notice that configuration two is a much smaller. And once again, I'll do another video in which I go through each one of these structures to show you how we're actually going to program them. There's number three for our interrupt service routines. That's what happens. Now remember, interrupts all go through the PLIC. So the platform level interrupt controller is this big device 
which we configured before, and all of our PCIe devices are gonna connect to it. So we're gonna have interrupt IDs 32 through 35. So that's 32, 33, 34, 35. There's four total ones in there. Now you could have more than four PCI Express devices or PCI devices. So I show you in here how that's going to work and I will talk about that in another video, how we actually acknowledge interrupt service routines and how we actually configure it so that it actually interrupts when it needs to do something. So scrolling down, you can see we have all these other type specific ones in there. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to look at that base address register, add the offset to it, and then you're going to dereference that. Now remember, dereference either could be a load or a store. Read from it or store to it, depending on which side of the equal sign it's on. So we talked about allocating the bar. I'll talk about that again in a different video. But for now, I just want to give you once again a general overview of what this is going to look like. So the last thing I want to cover is what's called a vert queue. A vert queue has three parts to it. I think that's how you spell it. There you go. Virtual queue. Inside the queue, the very first thing you have is what's called a descriptor. I can't talk in right at the same time. So there you go. Descriptor table. Number two is going to be what's called the device ring. I'm sorry, not the device, that's number three. The driver ring. So remember, we as the operating system, we're the driver. The thing we're contacting and communicating with, with is called the device. Okay, now what's going to happen is the descriptor is the actual data that we wanna send or, or hear from. So both the driver and the device are going to use the descriptor table. And in that table, it's basically a memory address and a size. And we can actually look at that memory or see what's in there. And generally what we're going to use is memory, RAM memory. We're going to put an address in there and say, okay, if you want to communicate with me, I want you to put something in this memory address. And then it's going to notify us through the device ring. Now, if we want to make a request, say, to the block device, uh, we'll see that later whenever we write the block device driver, but there's a specific header that we need to put in there, which will tell you the sector number and how many bytes we want to read. And what we do is we tell the block device, okay, I want you to read from this sector, this number of bytes, and I want you to put it in this physical memory location. Now that's physical RAM. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called a queue notify. Now remember, one of those structures was the queue notify structures, that configuration type. And whenever we put a one in there, we're telling it to go and do it, or whatever the vert queue number happens to be. Most of these only have one vert queue, which will be vert queue number zero. So the GPU has actually two of them, but we'll cover what all those different things do. So the descriptor table is the actual table where the data is located. These two rings down here we're going to put indices, indexes to this descriptor table. And then when we hit the go button, it, the device will look at our driver ring and say, okay, you want me to go to this descriptor index. So we'll go to that descriptor index, read what you want it to do, and then it will do whatever it is. Now, whenever it needs to respond back to you, it's going to go through the device ring and then trigger an interrupt. Now remember that ISR, the interrupt service routine configuration structure. So what's going to happen is you're either going to get number 32, 33, 34, or 35 through the plick and that will interrupt your operating system. You go handle that service routine. Remember, you'll do a click claim. It will tell you whether it's 32, 33, 34, 35. Once again, I have the math in here to tell you because the uh, the numbers are based on the slot and the bus number that it's in. So it's just a, an arithmetic that you'll have to do. So I've got the formula in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at that inside the driver rank. So I will do another video about the descriptors, the vert queue specifically. Once again, this is just an overview of how we're actually going to communicate with the device. So to recap and to finish out this video so it doesn't get too long, we have PCI at the bottom. Okay, so because that's our transport layer, that's where we have those five configurations. And the way we're going to look at those configurations are through the PCI capabilities pointer. So once again, if you don't remember, we're talking about these capabilities right here. So this is all PCI bus right here. Now, whenever we learn that this is a vert IO device, remember from the vendor ID, one alpha Fox route four, then whenever we see that the capability is going to be number nine, then the capability, the configuration type is either going to be one, two, three, four, or five. And it will tell you, okay, when you go to this bar, you offset it by this, and there you will find the structure for either one, two, three, four, or five, which is the common configuration, notifications, interrupt service routine, or whatever it happens to be. So that's all at the PCI level. When we go to the vert IO level, we're going to have those vert queues, those three things in there, the descriptor table, the driver ring and then the device ring. 
So that is common for every single Vert IO device, regardless of whether it's the GPU, the input device or whatever. So it's all common to them. Now, if we look carefully, we actually have to look at each individual device. For example, the block device has a specific format of its request. But what we're going to do is we're going to put that request inside of the descriptor table. And so what they'll do is the descriptor, we have a queue length. And once again, I'll cover this in a subsequent video, but we have a queue length and we're going to look at that queue length to see, okay, what is the next available descriptor I have? Generally, what we do is we merge all these requests into as many as we, fewest we can find. And then we're gonna make all these requests and then we're gonna hit the queue notify. That way there we can go on do other things while the block device is servicing our request. And then once again, when it does everything that we asked it to do, it will put something inside of the device ring and then trigger an interrupt. Whenever we get an interrupt, we're gonna, it just tells us, hey, something happened. Then we're gonna go to the device ring, the device ring and see what actually happened, what it's going to tell us. And once again, we'll cover that in a subsequent video. So that essentially is the Vert IO system that we're going to communicate. So obviously you're going to need to recall your PCI experience from either last week or whenever you did the PCI, but that was before this lecture. So go back if you don't remember how to read capabilities, how at the capabilities pointers work, because it's basically a linked list of capabilities, how to find the capabilities, that sort of stuff. So remember, you have to read the status register to see if there are capabilities. You have to read the vendor ID to see if this is a Vert IO device. And then the driver or the device ID will tell you what type of device it is. And remember, all it is is 1040 added to whatever Vert IO assigned each one of these numbers. If you don't recall, you can look at this table that I provided to you. For example, a block device, which is a hard drive, is gonna be 1042 on the device ID. All the vendor IDs will be one alpha Foxtrot 4. So whenever you see that, you can hand it off to the Vert IO subsystem. That's where you're gonna create your device queues, see what kind of device it is, see how you're gonna communicate, and then assign the capabilities. So all these requirements require a good knowledge of PCI as well as Vert IO before we can actually start talking to each specific device. So there you have it, that's Vert IO. Thanks for watching.